We woke up this morning, though, thinking that that there would be a huge problem in the college football world because there were so many games that were canceled left and right. We're talking Ohio State, Maryland canceled, Alabama, LSU canceled, big time games for the top five, Texas A and M, Tennessee canceled. But we still got a Saturday in which, you know, it wasn't all completely, you know, it wasn't all completely what you thought it was going to be. You know, top 25 teams taking on unranked opponents. There was no top 25 versus top 25 matchup this week. But we did get one upset. That is the good thing. We got one upset out of it, and there's probably going to be a new team in the top 25, but we'll talk about them in a moment. Um, but we got to get Friday out of the way first before we say anything else. And, I mean, Cincinnati just absolutely beat the brakes off of East Carolina. Beat them down so bad, the East Carolina coach, was he was crying. He was, he was salty. He was in tears about the whole situation. And, I mean, this is what Cincinnati has to do. This is what the group of five teams have to do to gain respect, as we've all, you know, said over the years. But this is no ordinary year. This is a year where Cincinnati could indeed make the college football playoff. This beatdown of ECU was just another good example of how good this defense is, how good um, Desmond Ritter is, how good, you know, um, Jared Dotes is as a running back to complement Desmond Ritter because Desmond Ritter has been playing lights out the last four or five games. He has been playing absolutely phenomenal. Now, a little bit before, you know, we get started with things on the Saturday slate, you know, we had we had games to be canceled, you know. Again, it was supposed to be Tennessee, Tennessee Texas a and Alabama, LSU, Ohio State, Maryland. I was especially excited about Ohio State, Maryland, uh, but we didn't get that at all. You know about Grant Wells, though, uh, Marshall? He threw five touchdowns against Middle Tennessee, five of them happy boys. Yeah, and Marshall was still undefeated. Conference USA, you know, may not be the best conference in the world to be winning games in, but when you win games in that conference, you get and this is this is this is probably going to be you know one one of this is I mean this just been great performance by Marshall I saw just a little bit of that game just a little bit not too much but just a little bit because um well Indiana decided to shut out Michigan State not Michigan we'll talk about Michigan in a minute but Michigan State got shut out by Indiana. Um, Fry, oh, Fly Fogel, how do you say his name? Fry Fogel, Fly Fogel. That man could catch the ball. He caught two touchdowns, had 200 yards receiving. Michael Penix had 300 yards passing despite the two interceptions. But he had 320 yards passing in this game. And Indiana's defense is looking pretty interesting. You know, there's a big, big matchup awaiting them next week. If we get there, and hopefully we get this game next weekend with Ohio State and Indiana. I really hope it happens. But anyway, what about the number nine team in the country? What about the other game that I watched? Um, hopefully most other people watch this game as well. Um, Miami, who, who was for some reason were the underdogs against Virginia Tech um, and Hendon Hooker. Well... Virginia Tech had a defensive plan to stop the Eric King, and they pretty much executed it very, very well until late in the game when, you know, the Eric King found Pope Jr. in the end zone to win the game late, and Miami escapes with a victory. This is really, you know, just Virginia Tech being a little bit too inept, you know, at trying to score because they've had they had some opportunities to score to keep this game out of reach and they just couldn't do that. They they let Miami hang with them and they had two ten point leads and blew them both. So you can't do that, you know, if you want to you know have respect in this conference. And Miami still has a small little chance 
in the ACC to get to the ACC championship, hopefully on the 7-19th. We don't know yet. Liberty. Liberty, Liberty. Um, Malik Willis. Y'all remember him, right? He was at Auburn. I, I for, totally forgot. And he's been lighting it up all season long. And we, I have a big up, we have a bigger opportunity next week because Liberty is going to take on another ACC opponent. They already took on Syracuse. They already took on Virginia Tech. And there ain't no. There is going to be something to give, you know, for Liberty because they are looking pretty good right about now. Looking pretty good. And guess who clinched the Sun Belt West? Little Louisiana, the Raging Cajuns. Easily dispatch South Alabama. Like I said, it was going to happen. They just beat them up. It wasn't even close. You know, I mean, just not the, just not what you really want right now. You know, Louisiana already had a match. I, I think they already played South, um, not South, Coastal Carolina earlier in the season. And these two teams may meet up again in the Sun Belt Championship game. So what about the, we, we talked about noon, so what about 3.30? 3.30 was not really that interesting of a slate. Honestly, we had two games, really. There was a third that kicked off later. You know, um, it moved times. Hey, did you know about Peyton Ramsey? I didn't know he was at Northwestern. Northwestern beats Purdue in a battle of undefeateds. And Northwestern is 4-0 in the Big Ten West. It is crazy to see that sort of thing happen. They, you know, Northwestern really has a good defense. And I think that, you know, if things go well for the Wildcats, you know, they have a big, big opportunity next week to keep themselves, you know, alive for maybe potentially a a playoff spot. I know, right? It could happen. Because oh, they had, they can, they can beat Ohio State if you know things go well for them. But they got to get past some of these obstacles first, like Wisconsin, and they already took care of Purdue. So there's just Wisconsin left, and then they got to get through the rest of the Big Ten West in order to you know keep themselves on pace. Because if was if Northwestern keeps winning, we could be seeing some surprises around here. So. What about the Trojans of USC? Well, they had to come back once again from a deficit late in the game, and they only won by four. Not pretty. Not a pretty performance. They, they just, I mean, USC just couldn't do anything pretty much for most of the game. I mean, it felt like Arizona had this game. They were dominating this game, but yet USC was in the lead at most of this game, and then, you know, Arizona tied it back up. So, there is a lot left to give. If if Utah can even play, uh, this may be the last opportunity before the Pac-12 championship for USC to lose. And USC could easily, if they get their act together, they could easily cakewalk to the Pac-12 championship. They could do that. What about Notre Dame? I think Notre Dame has finally woken up and realized that they are, you know, a top-tier team. I think they've woken up. they realized that they realized their potential, and they just, they just, you know, had their way with Boston College. Yeah, sure, there was a lot of turnovers in this game, but there was just enough defense in this game for Notre Dame to get on out and get out of this, you know, get out of Boston College with a victory. There was just enough there. They scored 40-something points, 45 to be exact in that game. I already talked about Northwestern beating up on Purdue. Well, not really beating up on Purdue. They they had a 20, they had a 14-point lead, and they gave up a, another touchdown late to win 27-20. So what about the Oregon Ducks before we talk about Michigan and Wisconsin and at the, t- at the one top 25 upset? Um, Oregon, really interesting team. I think, you know, they had they had a good game with Washington State. They really did. You cannot, you can't, you can't you really, you know, just fault Washington State. I mean, they had their opportunities. They had a lead, 19-7 to 7 at one point, but then, you know, Oregon's offense started this. Click 
you know, they had they had CJ Verdell running up and down the gut on Tyler Slow, um, completing passes to wide receivers and whatnot, just efficient. And then the defense started to step up late in this game. And there you have it. That's how that's how Oregon is going to win this game. That's how Oregon is going to keep winning games unless, you know, things start to look bad for them. And if things start to look bad for either them or USC, the slimmest of playoff chances that the Pac-12 has is done. I'm just saying that right now. What about the Florida Gators? Well, Florida, um, Florida, calm down out there. Kyle Trask, calm down, big buddy. You threw six touchdown passes, six of them against Arkansas. But the defense needs to be fixed. You cannot allow 35 points to Arkansas. You know, sure, Arkansas ain't no tough. They aren't no tough slouch. They're not easy to beat. But you cannot allow 35 points and expect to win against Alabama like that. Because Alabama won't put up 35. They'll put up 70 on you. But Florida's offense is strong enough to put up 70 on their own. So don't, don't, don't discredit the Gators just yet. Meanwhile, 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 we do have the Michigan Wolverines basically pretty much, it, it, it's pretty much over for Jim Harbaugh. I'm, I'm just saying that right now. Joe Milton threw some interceptions. The offense looked terrible. Wisconsin ran all over him. Graham Mertz wasn't even in the game. I think there was some other guy in the game. I didn't really watch this game for that long. I only watched for about two minutes flat. And then I turned on something else. Because, I mean, this was just rough to watch. Michigan gets steamrolled by Wisconsin. You know, they they just get absolutely destroyed. What was it? 49 to 11? Just terrible performance. Terrible performance by the Wolverines. And the Badgers, the Badgers are looking pretty good. They just, they just haven't been able to play in the last couple of weeks. But now they get to, and now they have another big matchup coming up. Very, very shortly. And last, but certainly not least, we have the Tulsa Golden Hurricane upsetting my boy Shane Bouchel, Sonny Dykes, and the SMU Mustangs. 28-24. Tulsa is going to be ranked, even though they probably should have lost that game against East Carolina a couple weeks ago, but we're not going to talk about that anymore. Um, yeah. Tulsa, they were down 21 to nothing, and then they came all the way back from a 24 to like 24, you know, like seven deficit and won this game. Tulsa defense, their defense stepped up big time because you know the SMU offense is just they can they can score, and when you limit this offense like this, you know there there is going to be some hell to pay. There is going to be some help to pay. And Tulsa did just what they needed to do. Limit Shane Bouchel, limit these receivers, keep them off the field, and, and start scoring touchdowns. You score touchdowns, you win the game. You play good defense, and you keep an air raid offense that can throw the ball up and down the field all over you. And you keep that you keep that type of offensive presence off the field, and you start scoring touchdowns on your own, you're gonna win games. You're gonna be ranked. Hopefully Tulsa will be ranked by next week, or rather by Sunday, because um, it's about to be Sunday now. But, so, week 11, college football. Really, there was, you know, not a lot this week. Cancellations, postponements, games getting completely canceled. You know, everything of that nature was just, wow, crazy. And... Uh, you know, the top 25 is not really going to change much, but there's going to be a lot of big tests for these top 25 teams in the next couple weeks. Let's hope they can get past them. Let's hope these teams can get past them. And let's hope these teams get past COVID as well. So with that being said, everybody, Big Boy Variety saying so long. I will see you Monday.